My name is Erin Bradley. I am a Gauteng Department of Education teacher at Brian Evan Primary School. Brian Evan Primary School is a school in Johannesburg, South Africa, and we've been using Purple Mash for about a year and a half. This is the third video that we're doing on the football challenge. I'd suggest that viewers go and have a good look at the other videos as well. I sincerely hope you're going to find it most informative. Purple Mash is a wonderful tool and it offers so many opportunities. Let's get started with this video on variables. Just to start off, we haven't done much on variables and how to declare variables. Now, when I say the word declare variables, I just mean that you are asking the computer to remember some letters or numbers. Uh, usually letters would be called a string. Like, for example, if I have a string of two and two, and I put them together, that would make 22, not the number 22, but a two, two together. But if I say, if I talk about the numbers two plus two, then I, you guys will know it'll be four. And you also get in Purple Mash variables that are actual functions. So functions are things that, little bits of work that you can do. Like, for example, you can reposition the ball. In this particular instance, we do reposition a ball in a function. Now, some of the stuff you, find, you guys will have, you, you will have no problem doing it. So I'm going to jump, not to all the challenges, but if you look at the first challenge on the football game, it says swipe the ball. The reason why they use the swipe event is because it's probably dealing with games that would normally be played on a tablet. And then you'd swipe your finger across the screen and that would move the ball, or you'd move the players in the game. All right, so swipe the ball is setting the speed greater than zero. I don't think you'll have a difficulty with that one. It's almost a physical science simulation, because it's using friction. Give the ball some friction. Now, this is a variable, but it's an undeclared variable. Don't worry if you don't understand what I mean, but it just means that you're going to set the ball's friction. So in other words, if I go like that, uh, you can see over here, look over there. It's got a little block moving upwards. The friction is more if you're moving on an inclination, if you're going on an incline and going upwards like this picture shows. If I'll try to make it a bit bigger like that, you can see that the, it's harder to push the block. So that's friction. Friction is all the opposing forces that slow the ball down from moving. So if you click on friction, you can set it to, let's go with five, and then when you swipe the ball, now that's an event call it, causing the ball to move. So when we swipe on the football, we can move the football in any direction, and then we can set the football's angle of movement, in other words, the direction it takes to be, it says, angle set to... And then when we click over there, the swipe angle. In other words, if I move my finger going upwards, the ball will travel upwards. If I pre move swipe downwards, the ball will travel downwards. It would go in the direction of the swipe. Now, this is very important when you guys make games that the ball or the players or whatever, the objects, behave appropriately. That they just do what you, the program, have set them out to do. Now I'm going to go a little smaller. So it says the football is set to, the friction is 5, but it's not moving yet. We have to give it a speed. So here it's just asking for slows down. So I had to set this to speed. So speed set to, and then we go swipe speed. So if I go like that, if I move my ball, look over there, the ball's moving at the speed of my movement. But it slows down very, very fast. Why does it slow down? Because my friction is very, very high. The friction that's holding it back doesn't allow the ball to move very far. But if I change that friction to, let's put this down to one, this variable of friction down to one, four, three, two, one. Now, stop the code and we play it again. We're in play mode. And incidentally, this is called the variable watch. This object that I'm moving around is the variable watch. It tells you the X, Y position of our ball, the angle, speed, everything's over there, it's shown. So if I go like that, look, the ball is, and the friction's holding it back. If I change the speed, 
to a random, let's make it well, between 1 and 10. It might go, look, it's going quite fast, but then it's slowing down because of the friction of 1. Stop it. Play it again. We could have got used our this part. Look there, it's going a bit fast. It's choosing a number between 1 and 10. I'm pausing it. Restart. Swipe. Let's play. Swipe. Oh, there it must have chosen a lower number. Maybe it could have been one or two, so the ball didn't move very much. There it's again. This friction aspect comes in and it's very, very interesting. If I move this below, look over here, it'll still read the friction first. Because remember when the program loads, it'll read that and then the swipe event will take place. Let's just go to the next part. Now this is the more complicated part. Reset the ball when it hits the wall. I'm not going to watch the videos. Create a function. Create a function. Now remember what I said earlier, that a function is a variable. In, pur in purple mesh, in this it's a variable. So we know that the ball must start it's going to be reset the ball to its starting position. Now look, let's find the starting position. There it is. Ball is static, it's not moving. The ball is not moving, so the static position of the ball, the starting position is x equals 3. Now that means on the x-axis, on the horizontal axis. On the y-axis, it's 8. So 3, 8 is the starting position. So we need to get this ball that when it moves, so when we swipe it, the ball moves, the football moves, and then we're going to say the football moves at a speed. What speed? We'll make it 5. Then we've got to make that the football moves at an angle. Now the angle can be set by you, angle of the swipe. So if I click on the green open block here, it's the swipe angle. So in other words, our ball will move. If I move that way and I swipe that way, look, the ball's moving there. If I stop the code and replay it, I could go here and I go that way, the ball goes there. And it's just going past the boundaries. If you go to, it says, create a function to reset the ball to its starting speed and x and y position. So let's have a look at the starting speed. Zero. Okay, let's have a look. It says it's got to go to back to zero when we call the function. Watch, this is how we do it. Create a variable. A variable could be a number, a string, or a function. Now we are making a function. So we're going to call it change speed speed I just want to type in there speed just want to delete this and make it that it's going to have an appropriate name now you're probably wondering why always make when you code that you use names that are understandable everything you name in computer coding make it understandable so when you read your code it's easy to work with. But when you use non-understandable names, it becomes confusing and complicated. So watch this. I'm going to call it speed and position reset. And look how I'm using the capital for the word speed, position, reset. If I had used all of these as lowercase letters, it would be quite hard to read that. And there's no spaces. We're going to go, and we're going to first of all change to the position. So we said if we go back to play mode, I'm in play mode. Look at the ball. It's at 3x, x position, horizontal position, and y is the vertical position is 8. So 3 and 8. So we go back here, the football, x position. So x must be, look at this, set to 3. Then we go, the football must now be, the Y position must be 8. Well done. So we got that's correct. So we know that the speed position, and now we have to set, we've set the position, which is X and Y. 
because the x-axis and the y-axis are the position. But now we need to set the speed. And what was the speed at the beginning? Zero. Zero. Good. So this will then be zero. Now that, that code is, is correct. Now we need to call that code. So it says call the function when the ball hits the wall. So now we go to the collision event because we know that the ball hits the wall then it's going to call that code. When the football collides with the wall then we're going to call that code. Now this is how you do it. Guys, to a calling a function it says variable name speed position reset and we're calling it. So that means as soon as the ball hits the wall it's going to jump to the function speed position reset. Now when we go to the beginning we could set the friction to let's make it one and let's see what happens if I go here I can move my ball look the ball hits and look it hits against the wall and it repositioned the ball and because the speed was set to zero it's static it's not moving it's ready to start again now Damien you'd probably pick up that this would be a perfect if you scored a goal the ball needs to go to the position to start the game for the, the, the start of the, the soccer match. It's not really the start, but what do you call it when you score a goal and you have to go back to the, 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 center, the center of the field to start again? What do you call that, guys who are soccer experts? Yeah, so that's where you'd use this. Look, if I move again, okay, imagine it's going to hit a goal. It hits there, and then, oh, we start over again. So, guys... Remember when you do this. Now, one of the rules also of when you use variables, always create your variables, which is called declaring them first. So move this, this block over here, move that in the beginning. So put it always in the beginning. And even though your code works, just make that a general rule because you'll find that when you get into complicated coding and you declare your variables first, it will always work. If I didn't declare it first, I'll show you something here. Watch. If I move this and I put it right at the bottom. Damien, look at this. And now watch when I call my code. Look at the variable. Look how it's changed. Variable name question mark. That's because the computer will read the lines of code going down. And when it gets to here, it's looking for a variable. It says, what's the name of the variable? And it doesn't know. Because the variable, the declaration where you make the variable is after the calling. So the logic says that this block has to be at the beginning. Once that's at the beginning, look over here. It says the name. It understands the name of speed position reset is understandable. So then your computer's learned something. It's learned the name of the variable first. Then it can use that variable. But if it, it can't use something that it doesn't even know exists. So that's called, that's the basis of computer logic. That there has to be some system that works properly. And that's the logic of computer coding. I hope that you guys are going to make sure that you declare your variables always. Just make that a rule. And you'll see when you go into a situation where other people are saying, oh, it's not working. Yours probably will be working because your variables have to be in the right place. It's all about things being organized in the right position. If everything's in the right place and the logic works, there's a working mechanism, the system will work and your game will work. Okay, and that's all I wanted to show you for now. If you do find that you're at home and you can watch the other two videos, which were directed at grade six classes, but I've written in the YouTube description that they are focusing on grade six and seven. It'll help you even more. And when you go and do IT at high school, you'll see that it's quite useful and valuable bits of information I've given you. Thanks guys for listening. Appreciate your um, working, uh, giving me a listening ear. And uh, good luck with us. If you're stuck, let me know and I'll come and help you.